we are going to look at is being able to graph the um, reciprocal trig function. So rather than trying to like memorize these reciprocal trig functions or memorize the process, what I want to do is try to see if I can make any kind of conceptual sense for you guys as far as what these graphs look like. Now, um, one thing to keep in mind, guys, is we understand that sine and cosecant are related to each other, right? When we, th when we looked at triangles, we had sine was opposite over hypotenuse, while the cosecant was hypotenuse over opposite, right? So they're the reciprocal relationship. Sometimes I just like to think of them like siblings, like they're related very much to each other, right? They're just kind of polar opposite siblings. Um, now, and the next thing, then when we started talking about the unit circle, we said, well, the sine represented the y coordinate. Well, then the cosecant was 1 over the y coordinate, right? right? Now, last class period, we spent about 20 minutes plotting all the points for sine. Now, we could do that for, cos for cosecant, but I mean, we already did it once, right? Why do it again? So let's, go by, let's just try to understand conceptually of what we do understand about the sine graph or about the graph. So I changed this from 1 to negative 1. Let's graph the sine graph. And hopefully you guys agree that is what the sine graph looks like for negative 1 to 1 has a period of 2 pi. Now, again, we got these values by using points on the unit circle. That's what you missed. We did pi over 6, which is 1 half. Pi over 4, square root of 2 over 2. So that's what we did. We plotted all the points. Why about and then the other thing that we want to talk about was why understanding why these values were positive. Well, that's because it's the angles in the first and second, qua first and second quadrant. These are negative because it's angles in the third and the fourth okay, quadrant. Right? We conceptually understand that. So now let's conceptually understand secant, though. And rather than figuring out, because I'm pretty sure like, to plot, like, that's going to give us some decimal that we could plot to see what it looks like, right? But why go through all of that? Let's do some points that are a little bit easy to remember. Because if I want to like fall back on something that I don't need to, that I can always remember and not have to like memorize, I think you guys agree like these four coordinate points is pretty easy to remember. I don't need to get like flashcards out to memorize these points, right? We're kind of like comfortable with this. So let's look at the secant, I'm sorry, the cosecant of some angles. So again, remember when we graph the sign. We did everything from 0 to 2 pi, correct? So let's look at what the angles would be for each of these points. So the sine of 0 was 0, the y coordinate. That's why we got 0 right there. The cosecant of 0, cosecant of the angle 0, is 1 over the y coordinate. Well, 1 over y would be undefined. undefined. And we represented undefined yesterday as a asymptote. Now let's go to pi halves. 1 over 1, which is just going to be 1. one. So at pi halves, my cosecant graph is 1. At pi, my cosecant graph is, again, 1 over the y coordinate, which is 0. So 1 over 0 is? Undefined. Undefined. So at pi, and then when I go down to here, I again have negative 1. Now, I don't want you to confuse the cosecant graph with the sine graph, so I'm just going to dash this because we're just using this as an aid. But you guys can see there are some relationships, right? At least the relationship so far, oh, and then let's do 2 pi. When we go back to 2 pi, you see, oh, that's going to be another asymptote. So the relationships right now between the sine graph and the cosecant graph, wherever there was an x-intercept of the sine graph, it's undefined for the cosecant graph. And that makes sense, because intercepts for sine is when it's 0, you do 1 over 0, it's now undefined. They also share points, right? They both share the point pi halves 1, and they both share the point 3 halves 1, or 3 halves negative 1, because obviously 1 over any 1 is obviously going to be the same number, correct? So now we got to think, well, what do we think about the graph looks like? Like, how, how would the shape of cosecant relate to the shape of the graph. And that's where we could plot the points. Or I can just basically think of, have you guys remember, like, just think of it as like the mirror image, the reciprocal, the flipped image. And if we were to plot points like we did last class period, you would get a shape of a curve that would look like this. All right. Um, now, it's important for us to understand that, again, the period, which is in your notes, 
the period, again, is going to be 2 pi over b. So the period does not change. Note, though, there is no more amplitude. Because remember, amplitude is for sine and cosine. It's the half distance from the max to the min. We don't have a max and a min here, so correct? Huh? Because no, because there's no max. The graph okay, goes to infinity, right? So there is no amplitude. The phase shift, the vertical transformation, those are still the same. I didn't write them in your notes because I expect you guys to know them. Um, the, the range, though, is different. You guys see the range here is from negative 1 to 1, right? So look at the range from cosecant. It's basically everything except for the range of the sine graph. So if you think about the range here, it's basically from negative infinity to negative 1. Skip over the sine graph, and then it continues from 1 to infinity. So remember that good old union symbol we used to use? We're going to want to bring that back. So for the range for the spin, it would be infinity. It cannot be for the opposite. Huh? So for the two range for the third one, it would not be those two, apparently. Yeah, it's not going to be within there. That's the sine graph. There's no y values there, cosecant okay. values. Now, I'm not going to talk about the domain, because the domain is all real numbers except for where the asymptotes occur. So let's just look at where the asymptotes occur. And this is something we talked about with tangent. So the asymptotes occur at 0, at pi, at 2 pi, at, let's do it again, 0, pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi, right? Come on, I play the game with my daughter. We do 1, 2. Like, you guys can see the pattern. So we can see that the distance between each asymptote is pi, right? So we can add pi over and over. So to represent repeated addition, we could use to represent repeated addition, we can use what operation is repeated addition? Multiplication, right? So then what we want to do is we could say, well, let's just pick an asymptote. Let's pick 0. So we could say x is equal to 0, the first asymptote, plus pi repeatedly. So we just do multiply by n, where n could be 1, 2, 3, n could be any number. Do we really need to add the 0, though, at the front? No. So we can just simplify this to pi n. 